This is Need You Bad from uh, Ted Nugent. I guess kind of a, maybe a slightly obscure song for him. Uh, it's certainly not as popular as Cat Scratch Fever or Hey Baby, those tunes. Uh, but if you're a Nugent fan, you definitely know this tune. It's a killer riff. The song, it just drives along. It's like a 12-bar blues shot from a cannon. And uh, the opening lick is really cool and uh, definitely tricky to play. As a note, there's a ton of guitars in this thing popping in and out of the mix and uh, he plays an extended solo in the middle over a G minor pentatonic. And then there's a slew of harmony guitars, you know, two and three part harmony guitars. I'm not covering all of that in this lesson. I just want to show you how to play the tune, the main guitar part. I will go through a few of his lead breaks that I think are sort of signature and a significant part of the song. And then of course you can just uh, improvise however you choose uh, over some G pentatonic stuff. Ted goes uh, pretty nuts on this one, okay? So let's just talk about that opening riff right away. I'm going to show you a couple of different fingerings for this. I used both of them uh, when I opened up the video. Uh, so here's the tab on the screen and slowing the lick down. So the picking on that, I've got a downstroke, another downstroke, then down, up, down. I think that's probably the most effective way to maneuver those strings. And then I do another two downstrokes, believe it or not, and then down, up, down, up. seven sharp nine chord a la Jimi Hendrix okay and the alternate fingering I wanted to show you is this one right here some of you might find it easier to do that to simply move down to the uh, third fret on the A string uh, as opposed to crisscrossing that can be a little bit difficult with alternate picking. Some of you might find it easier to just play it on the one string. Either way is fine. Ted plays it with the pinky over here in the more box position. But either way is fine. It's the same notes and it sounds the same. So either way is totally fine. Just play it whatever works best for you, okay? And then we are into the main riff of the song. And like I said, this is basically just a fired up blues. You're moving from the one to the four and the five in a typical blues uh, fashion. So that's like an octave type riff, right? We've got uh, downstrokes on the third fret on the sixth string. And then we're skipping a string and playing the octave, right? I use my pinky for that. You can use your ring finger if you want to. But as a note, all the notes played on the sixth string are downstrokes. And then the notes, the individual notes played on the D string are all upstrokes. And there's definitely some palm muting going on back here. <laughs> See, I kind of rock my finger down to catch that note. You can just leave your finger there barred if you've got enough muting going on back here, but I find the sound gets a little bit muddy, but whatever works for you is totally fine. You can even use a different finger if you want to. As I always like to say, whatever works good for you is uh, the best way to do it. 
So we play the riff there four times, just like a blues, and then we take it up to the eighth fret, exact same riff, and uh, you might want to switch to your ring finger up here because the frets get, of course, smaller and closer together. <laughs> two times and then back down here to G for two times as well. Then we move to the five chord, which is D. Uh, we've got a one, four, five and G, G, C, D. So we're at the 10th fret now, same riff. You play it one time there and it doesn't have a conventional blues turnaround these octaves down here at the first fret f and f sharp function as a kind of turnaround for this and again you can use your ring finger if you want to and i'm doing that all with down strokes because i think it really drives it a little bit better or with your pinky we come back to the main riff one time and you play the killer lick from the beginning of the song again. So let me do that slow. Or whichever way you want to play it. And that's basically how the verses work, right? It's like a one, four, five blues, as I mentioned. And then we move into the uh, next section, which is sort of a, uh, a pre-solo section, if you will, kind of a bridge. And I will cover all three of Ted's lead breaks here because I feel like they're sort of significant to the song, okay? But first, of course, is the uh, little Chuck Berry part that he places in between each lead break. Lead break, and then he plays it again. Another lead break. And finally, the last one. And he takes off on a mighty lead solo right there. So let's talk about that a little bit. I've tabbed it out more or less the way you hear it played the very first time and then there's little subtle variations in there so you can play it exactly as it is on the tab which sounds pretty cool very chuck berry but you can also just play it like this that's totally fine as well and then there's some heavy muting on the uh and I'm doing this all with downstrokes because, again, it just really drives it along. Like so, okay? And then on that last one, you just kind of keep driving it. And that's just a D uh, triad shape up here. 12, 11, 10, 10. And he goes into uh, his solo. And the solo takes place basically over that same 12 bar blues. There's some breakdowns in there where they stop, you know, uh, before they go to the four or whatever, but you can hear that pretty clearly on the recording. So let's talk about those lead breaks that he plays in between this. So the first lead break is. So what I'm doing there is I'm grabbing the G and the B string together. You can do it like that if you want to. I just like doing it this way. It feels pretty natural for me. And you bend both of the strings about a quarter bend very slow and lazily. And then we're pulling off, as you can see from the tab. And then we've got a couple of pinched or artificial harmonics, however you choose to look at. And uh, if you don't know how to do those type of harmonics, don't worry about it just yet, okay? I might do a follow-up video or a future video, in fact, talking about specific uh, guitar techniques, okay? But you do want to uh, engage the string with the skin of your thumb, sort of the side of your thumb. I dig in with my nail and everything. <laughs> that type of thing okay so again that break is 
And the second lead break is like so. So that's a pentatonic lick as well, and I kind of rake across the strings right there. But it's a, basically a full step bend on the B string at the sixth fret, nice and slow. And then we do a pull off. Right? Back to the third fret on the B string. Grab the E string at the sixth fret. Kind of a quarter bend. And then the same thing on the B string. So you wind up with. And uh, you might want to figure out which fingers work best for you on that. But that's the way I like to play it. And the third break before he goes into the uh, extended solo is played like this. So that one's kind of cool as well. Ted's kind of a vicious picker in his right hand. So there's some muting, of course, you can hear that, some definite muting involved in this, but it's... And you definitely want to use alternate picking for that. And then a pull-off similar to what he's done already. And then another pinched harmonic. And then after all the extended jamming and the layers of guitar harmonies and all the rest, we find ourselves right back to the tune for the last verse. So it's that main riff again, except he's not doing this. We've just got an F power chord, okay? So it goes... And then we move it to uh, C again, up to the 8th fret, just like you did with the other riff, except we're still using that power chord idea. Up to the 5 chord, all the way up to the 10th fret. the octaves as a turnaround just like he did before. Okay, and then we move into kind of a uh, boogie woogie part, but it's still again a 1-4-5 blues in G. song ends. So as you can see, I just took that boogie riff up to the 8th fret for C, brought it back to the 3rd fret for G, went up to the 5 chord at D. And they end it. Okay, so let me play that for you slow. That lick at the end is just a straight pull-off lick. And the ending lick, okay, the uh, very opener of the song. So that's a pull-off lick, of course. So you're only picking the first note and the very last note. And that's played eight times in a row. And you end the song with the very lick that opened the song. And at the end of the song, you'll also hear another guitar playing this whole thing in octaves, okay? So I wanted to tab that out for you as well. So you would just play it up here. Or if you like the other fingering, you can, of course, use that. But uh, in any event, here it is nice and slow. Either way.
way is absolutely fine. So there you go. Need you bad from uh, Ted Nugent. Uh, seriously jamming track. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you soon.